I've got these two ripples that were made from point sources, and I, I just transferred them onto overhead transparencies, and I want to show you on the projector. Um, if I were to take these two and put the two point sources close to each other, can you see the neat pattern there? That, that neat pattern is, is the idea that these black lines, these simple black lines, the black lines may represent the peaks and the white lines may represent the troughs. But you can see that where the black lines overlap, you're going to get super dark regions. And where the white lines overlap, you're going to get the light regions. Can you see that you're going to get the same sort of pattern as we just discussed? If you get these two sources close to each other, there's constructive interference bands that are going to occur. And they're going to get, if you like, projected up against this line that I'm going to define with my, my Sharpie. Same idea. Okay? It's just that now I can change the spacing really easily without having to redraw it over and over again. What happens to, and notice this, what happens to the spacing against this far wall over here of the interference pattern as I get them closer? Yeah, we're dispersing the interference pattern. As I get them further apart, what happens to the interference pattern? There's more and smaller ones. Yeah, so here's, I want to make a proposal to you. What if these weren't bathtub dippers? What if they actually were a radio antenna? And the, you had a radio antenna at that point, and it was working to transmit radio waves, either for the purposes of listening to your favorite tunes or for your cell phone. Let's go with the cell phone thing, okay? How would you rather have it? If you could only have two cell phone towers in your neighborhood, how would you rather have it? Like this? Or like this? Uh, why? Well, it depends where you're living. Why, why do you say that, Andrew? Because if it's too close together and you're like, let's say you're on an edge, then yeah. you'll be able to get a somewhat decent signal. Right. But if you're in like a direct line of fire, I guess, of the two ways, or the most constructive interference, then you yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah, so I mean, if this was. If this was cell phone towers, and you're assuming the cell phone towers are transmitting on the same wavelength, because it's the same cell phone company, I suppose, then you might care about this kind of a, an antenna array. If you had a radio antenna array that was sending out these cell phone signals or receiving your cell phone signals, if you happen to live in a destructive interference zone, you're kind of screwed. I think that was my old neighborhood. <laughs> I never got my cell phone signal. It was like useless having a cell phone in that neighborhood. I never got a, I won't tell you what what cell phone company, I don't want to be accused of, shh, never mind. Uh, uh, but when I moved to my new neighborhood, it was great. And I have a funny feeling that either there was no cell phone tower around, or, or else there was an interference pattern. I suspect there was just no cell phone tower around. But no, maybe this was the case, okay? On the other hand, like Andrew says, if they're, if they're spaced in an intelligent way, you can make sure that either there's a minimized destructive interference pattern, or you could try and be strategic and, and not let the destructive interference locations happen where there's residential areas or whatever, okay? So there's some thoughts that could go into this.